Well, still keeping our focus on the face off between the police and the National Assembly, and joining us on Sunrise Daily to discuss that is uh, Mr. Femi Falano, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the show at this time. But now that the Senate has uh, declared the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, as an enemy of democracy, is there a moral justification, do you think, that the Senate can rely on to call him as such? Well, um, the Senate is entitled, with profound respect to its own opinion, the legislators can say anything within the present, I mean, the ambit of the chambers. You cannot challenge them. You can sue them. You know, you understand me? So, but I think it's not about morality. We're dealing with law. We're dealing with the Constitution. And this is not the first time this unfortunate incident will occur in our country. Unfortunately, this time around, the Senate didn't get it right. Are you saying the Senate doesn't have the constitutional powers to ask the Inspector General of Police to appear before it? With profound respect, we have to look at the Constitution. And I have made this point over and over again. By virtue of Section 67 of the Constitution, specifically Section 67, Subsection 2, the National Assembly, or either chambers, can summon a minister when the affairs of his or her ministry are under consideration. The only other occasion that a public officer can be summoned by the National Assembly is when proceedings are ongoing to expose corruption, Section 88 of the Constitution, and when a law is being debated either with a view to amending it or to have a new law entirely. You can summon any public officer to provide information with respect to that law, lawmaking exercise. But th there is no such power given to the National Assembly by the Constitution to summon everybody. I recall last year, Professor Sage. Isaac Yuasage, the chairman of the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, made a statement <coughs> which the Senate considered derogatory. And therefore, there was a huge debate in the Senate that he was going to be summoned. Professor Sage contacted me to rush to court to challenge the powers of the Senate to summon him. We had already prepared the papers. When it did occur to us, come, why don't you do a letter to the National Assembly so that the impression is not given that he was trying to use the court to checkmate what they regarded as their power. So we did a polite letter, which Professor Sage, you know, uh, endorsed, signed, you know, beautiful letter saying, sorry, these are the limits of your powers. Even though you have debated and resolved that you are going to summon me, if I get the summons, I'm going to sue you on these grounds. You are not conducting an inquiry with respect to corruption. You are not engaged in any lawmaking exercise. Therefore, you cannot summon me. Furthermore, I have freedom of expression. If you feel offended, any of you, by what I have said, you sue for libel. And that is the law. In fairness to the Senate leadership, the matter was allowed to die a natural death. And that was the end of the matter. On several occasions, editors have been summoned since the Second Republic, and they have had to go to court. Does the, does the Senate have the power to summon the president? No. The Senate Section doesn't have the power no. to summon the president no. of the Federal Republic? No. Section 67, Section 1 has given the president the discretion to address the National Assembly, either jointly or separately, on any matter of national importance. That's by the president. The president or the governor of a state cannot be summoned. And that is the constitution. So I well, I, the, the National Assembly has my sympathy. But what can be done 
A constitutional review is ongoing. You can deal with this lacune or the gaps you have identified, but don't go outside the limits of your powers. When you do that, you ridicule the institution. So, and that is what is going on. Well, how can you summon, there was a time, a judge, I think the chair of the, the chairman of the Code of Conduct Tribunal was summoned over the trial of uh, the Senate president. president. And they came out to say, no, you can't summon a judge who is performing a judicial function. Now, you say the IG should come, apart from killings in the country, it should come and justify while one of your members, Senator Dino Melaye, has been brutalized. Even though I condemned the arraignment of the senator on a stretcher in both Abuja and Lokoja magistrate courts. But I did make it clear, I did make it clear to the National Assembly, please don't individualize problems of police brutality. When you do that, you lose public support. It's the height of hypocrisy to say, oh, because the police have brutalized our member. Therefore, the IG must come. What of thousands of Nigerians that are brutalized daily? And so that was why I, I just wrote a letter two days ago to the president of the Senate. I copied the speaker. Please. You can use Senator Dino Melaya's predicament to examine the law and adopt the United Nations uh, standards, a minimum standard for the treatment of criminal suspects and prisoners in our country, otherwise known as the Nelson Mandela rules, and send that letter to them. But don't single out the harassment of your member to summon the IG or a minister. But no. Even though that's not the only case. No, I'm just saying. Mr. Fano, you know, that was where they lost it. You shouldn't have mixed the two. But with respect to the killings, I am saying, as far as that constitution is concerned, the person to summon is the Minister of Interior and the Attorney General. And they have the powers to do that. Killings are going on. So the Minister of Interior and the Attorney General can be summoned by the state? By section, six, section 67, subsection 2. But there's no provision for summoning IG, for summoning customs boss to, to appear in one uniform or the other, to summon Professor Sage. No, it's not there. Why is it that the ministers can be summoned, but these other uh, heads of institutions cannot? Is it because they are somewhat... They are under those authorities. For instance, assuming the IG goes there, right? Or killings are going on. Why haven't they stopped? You can only give information with respect to what the police, the Nigerian police force is doing. What of the state security service involved? In the killings, I mean, in uh, following up on the killings, intelligence agencies, the Nigerian army is involved, or the armed forces are involved, in copying the violence going on in different parts of the country. The appropriate person to do that would be the Minister of Interior. Has the we IG, are told has, that has foreigners IG, are coming to the country. The IG cannot answer any question. Has the IG done anything wrong? Because when you look at the constitution and the powers it gives the IG to have representation in times when he cannot be at a particular function or event. Has the IGP done anything wrong by sending in a representative to the Senate? No, for sure. Oh, no, no. You can't say there is nothing so extraordinary about so that. So why then whenever, is this at? Whenever what? the Senate president is out of the country or is in a court, the, the deputy senate president goes down with the proceedings. What are we looking at? Are but, we looking but, at but, the but, office? Are we looking at the office of the inspector general of police? Or are we looking at the individual Ibrahim Idris? In this case, the senate wanted the individual in that office. But again, as I said, that is neither here nor there. You still have to find out what are the powers of the senate or the national assembly over the Inspector General of Police, and I'm saying with profound respect, I didn't write the Constitution, and I would like to suggest to them to take advantage of this experience to have another look at the Constitution. But as it, as it stands today, your past to summon an editor, the IG, head of customs, department, and the rest of them are circumscribed by that Constitution. However, if the if I, were, if I were in the Senate or the National Assembly, 
I will feel, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let us review the police act by way of an amendment, right? If that exercise is going on, the IG will have no choice. Mr. Fowler, you're giving the you're giving the legislature an idea here. But let me take you back a bit when you talked about the powers of the National Assembly to summon the president or governor. Uh, at what point then, going by the constitution, does the legislature oversight sort of or check the activities of the executive? No, um, I mean, for instance, the judiciary. A court order is binding on all authorities and persons in Nigeria. But you cannot summon the president. No court can summon the president or the governor of a state. In the same manner, you cannot, the National Assembly cannot serve a summons commanding the president to appear before it. You know, when, you know with profound respect, I think our federal legislators and I made this point over the maze, the controversy around the maze. We are mixing parliamentary system with the presidential system. In a parliamentary system, the president, the vice president, and all ministers are members of the legislature. So you can ask any of them questions there and then. But when you have a presidential system, it's a different ball game altogether. Those who can be summoned, the circumstances under which you can summon them are spelled out in the Constitution. And if you, I mean, for instance, if I say anything, and with profound respect, the National Assembly cannot summon me. Someone you are I'm not a public know. officer. So under what law can you summon me? Unless you want me to come and throw light shed light on some of the maybe you are making a law and if you think oh maybe this lawyer has some expertise in this area you can invite him politely but you can summon me and many people have gone to court whenever they have been given summons sorry in in view of all of this mr follow now how then should the legislature help or how then should the issues of the security challenges in the country summon the minister of internal affairs summon the attorney general of the country because in all these cases and this is the root cause of this criminality going on nobody has been prosecuted you mean uh, people are being killed all over the country you mean the minister of interior should be the one uh, the senate is talking to concerning this oh yes situation? oh yes that is the law so why, the why hasn't the senate taken that opportunity i, I will not to, know to to call um i will not uh, know mr mr dumbazo i will not know I, I think the senate did was not properly advised with profound respect i'm serious is there anything wrong in the senate asking ig uh i'm not talking about what is oh, wrong is there anything wrong because of the, the wanton killings that have happened in Bainway State, the killings that have happened in Zamfara State, 27 people were killed just last week, and then we're still having this violence about the insurgency in the Northeast. What is the police doing is the question, simple. Appear before us, tell us what the police is doing to try to stop these killings of you, our people. You and I is know, wrong in you and I know what the police is doing, nothing, because we have not equipped the police because funding has not been provided. I, I was watching the television a couple of days ago. There were some killings in Kaduna. The governor went there, uh, Malang Nasiru Erufai, and announced, oh, we are going to have a military barracks here. We are not operating a military dictatorship, mind you. You are not talking of equipping the police. To deal with internal security in our country. It's all about the military as of today. Even for primary election of political parties, you are bringing out the, tr the troops to make what point? The Constitution says, Section 217 of the Constitution, that you can only bring in the military to aid civil authorities, the police, once there is a breakdown of law and order, insurrection. But you don't call the army first. You call the police. 
And to do that effectively, you equip the police. There are 10,000 police stations in Nigeria. Not one has the necessary guidance to do police work. So the police is not properly equipped. We have, you, a, we have the civil defense. Not that, properly that, trained. Not properly trained. We have the immigration that is lacking in manpower and equipment. <laughs> we have the customer service that is not properly funded. So at the end of the day, we have our, our borders porous. Yes. We have the internal structures yes. not properly functioning yes. together. And is there no way forward? Well, there is a, a lot of ways. You have so, a lot of ways. But... Both the legislative and the executive arms of government have not really sat down. How can we deal with the inadequacies of this institution? I mean, I, I take NMPC for instance. The NMPC have been juggling figures about uh, uh, a fuel taken out of the country to neighboring countries. And we are told millions are taken out daily. And I say, how? I, I, I used to patronize the roots, what later became known as Nadeko roots, getting out of the country, not through the borders. I have never, I never in my experience, and I'm talking of between 1988, right, and 1998, 10 years, I never saw any instance, and I've challenged the authorities to name an instance where fuel is smuggled through the bush. It must be through the highway. You mean you cannot man all the highways in the country? And there is a system, a technological device, Aquila system, acquired by the Petroleum, Petroleum Equalization Fund, PEF, maintained yearly at a cost of billions of naira. You sit down on your table to let you know from the loading point of tankers where fuel is being taken to. The, the, the gadget is there. The equipment is there. So how can you now tell me? You don't know how much fuel is taken out of the country to where? That route Mr. that you talked about, that route that you talked about, let me quickly comment, uh, that you said you explored for about 10 years. Are, they, are those routes still open? Of course. Possibly, is that the route through which some of these uh, alleged herdsmen or no. those trained by, no, 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 by Gaddafi forces? No, 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 no. Mr. President, please, please. Come into I, the country? No, I think the Gaddafi forces thing, I think we are getting it wrong. How? We do not have Libyans fighting in Nigeria. Take that from me. How can and you if, say anybody, that? And if anybody says Libyans are fighting in the country, let the person arrest one and show us. All the killings, all the arrests that have been made in Benue, the police have made over 200 arrests. None is a Libyan. What is being misunderstood is this. Based on, with profound respect, the irresponsibility of Nigeria and South Africa at the Security Council of the United Nations, the decision to invade Libya was not opposed by Africa. And so, particularly for Nigeria, which did not consider her strategic interest that if Gaddafi falls and Libya was in crisis, we would bear the brunt. So, as soon as Gaddafi was removed, the armory was looted. And people rushed out with arms and ammunition, many of them very dangerous. Many very expensive. And they were hiding, hawking them in the entire Sahel region. And our government was told, please, you better go and buy off all these arms and ammunition so that they do not end up in wrong hands in the country. Unfortunately, nothing was done. I'm talking of about 2013-2014. Again, you can confirm this. The Boko Haram sect bought part of these weapons. Hence, we're in trouble. Those weapons found their way into the country. And that was when his men began to move around with AK-47. It was very strange that the president said, we grew up to know his men moving around with sticks, at best with some little knives, 
But now, people move around with AK-47. Because apart from the dangers posed to them, you also have cattle rustlers stealing the cows and killing some of the herdsmen. So what must be done now? What must be done, which I think the government has just embraced now, rather belatedly, is the establishment of ranches. And that's what has worked in other countries, including African countries. And Botswana is the best example here. Once you have ranches, you practice animal husbandry. You put the cattle there. The cattle will be well nourished. You plant grass, supply water. The herdsmen will be able to stay in one place and educate their children and make more money. The government has just embraced that. Our duty now is to compare the government to proceed and ensure that these ranches are established. It is primitive. In this agent time, to ask somebody to leave Niger Republic or Sokoto or Katsina to bring cattle to Lagos, it's not, it's not workable. I'm sure that uh, Mr. President will be listening to you even though he's in uh, London now. But let's talk about his, uh, his, his trip to, to London for a medical checkup. What does that, how does that come to you in mind? Because now that the country is faced with this frost of security concerns and uh, just about so many things, the IGP having a face off with the National Assembly, so many issues are just brewing up at this moment. The president is not feeling well, the health sector people are on strike. And this throws up a big question about our health uh, management system. And particularly, Mr. President, who at some point had alluded to the fact that we should be able to treat just about everybody in Nigeria. What are your thoughts to Mr. President's uh, trip to London for, for medical checkup? Well, I wish the President well and a quick recovery. As a nation, these trips, these medical trips by the President and the rich in Nigeria expose our country to ridicule because you cannot justify that a nation of enormous resources cannot fix a few hospitals to the extent that everybody can be treated in Nigeria. A few years ago, I was compared to go to court with a view to restraining public officers from being allowed to go abroad for treatment at our collective expense. Even though the federal court said I had no local standard, the case is on appeal. We must get to that level whereby if you are going to public office in Nigeria, you cannot go abroad for medical treatment. You cannot educate your children abroad. Unless you get to that stage, we're not going to fix our hospitals. We won't fix our schools. So that's, um, but it's, it's not allowed. In fact, I can even go for that to say it's discriminatory and illegal. In what sense? For anybody to use public funds to treat himself while the majority of people are dying in public hospitals that are not maintained. There is equality before the law. So you can't take the rich out of town while the poor in their millions are dying. Now. He let this is to suggest that you're saying there are some people that are above the law. Oh, oh, yeah, in Nigeria, of course. That, that's, that's the practice. But the law doesn't allow you. That's what I'm saying. And that's why I'm in court. To okay. say, you can't single out a few people because they are top public officers, treat them abroad, while the majority are dying in your ill-equipped hospital. We are right, we have the means. And I have pleaded with the government, don't take the money being recovered to the budget. Because it's going to be lost. It's always so insightful. Use those funds to build hospitals, to rebuild our schools, to rebuild our roads. Always so insightful talking to you, Mr. Femi Falan, our senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much indeed for talking to us on Sunrise Daily. And we'll be back in just a moment. Join us again. With respect to the killings, I am saying, as far as that constitution is concerned, the person to summon is the Minister of Interior and the Attorney General. And they have the powers to do that. Killings are going on. So the Minister of Interior and the Attorney General can be summoned by the state. By section, six, section 67, subsection 2. But there's no provision 
for someone in IG, for someone in customs bus to, to appear in one uniform or the other, to summon Professor Sage. No, it's not there. Why is it that the ministers can be summoned, but these other uh, heads of institutions cannot? Is it because they are somewhat... They are under active? those authorities. For instance, assuming the IG goes there, right? Or oh, killings are going on. Why haven't they stopped? You can only give information with respect to what the police, the Nigeria police force is doing. What of the state security service involved in the killings, I mean, in uh, following up on the killings, intelligence agencies, the Nigerian army is involved, or the armed forces are involved, in covering the violence going on in different parts of the country. The appropriate person to do that would be the Minister of Interior.